Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Starseed Mission Support. I am so excited to bring to you this extra quantum galactic activation today. The unlimited money glitch. What would life like be like? What would life be like for the star seeds, for the angels on earth? If money was never ever a limitation to how we can create on the earth, what if as a light worker, as a star seed, as a being who has nothing but the greatest dreams for the earth and all of the access to unlimited funding and resources, what could life be like for us and what would the earth look like in a short number of years this is what we're going to be exploring here together but as you arrive into the space i just welcome you with the sound healing to bring you into the space of love and harmony original creation frequencies so come and have a rest bring your soul come into this energy of harmony and original creation and together we're going to explore these ideas of limitless creativity and how we can really apply these quantum mechanics to maximizing our mission here on earth so just enjoy this introduction for a little while and we're going to get started in just a couple of minutes episode of Starseed Mission Support. I'm really excited to be here with you all again and I've just been having some 
really extraordinary experiences in my life that I couldn't wait to share with you. So drop me in the chat. Let me know where you're from, how you're doing today. For those of you that are new to my work, I like to share some of my sound healing in the beginning of calls just to harmonize the energy. You know, we've all got such busy, chaotic lives. And some of these transmissions, you know, we go super quantum, super cosmic, and you know, it just helps us get out of our mind and into our body, into our energy, into this creative and inspirational and intuitive part of our body and our consciousness to have these sorts of fun and riveting conversations. I like to explore things with my consciousness. I feel like that's one thing that I'm really starting to appreciate and love about myself. I had this high school anthropology class assignment one time and the assignment was like if you were an alien from outer space how would you conduct research in these things and some of those things are like fast food and you know dating tv shows and i was like this feels a little too real <laughs> and since then I've, i guess it was an activation because it really activated this galactic anthropologist part of me and connected me to this cosmic scientist mindset you know, I think out in the cosmos, especially in the higher consciousness civilizations, science is really approached with so much reverence and curiosity. And it's never coming from this place of needing to figure things out in order to profit or take advantage of nature, and especially to use that knowledge to bodos other over other people and other cultures. And so I've really been paying attention to how on the earth we've been so programmed by the scientific mafia to cling on to ideas and ways of perception. And it really just takes all the fun out of all the ways we could be perceiving and experiencing and exploring this fascinating reality that we're all sharing and living in. And so one thing that I'm really working on is staying true to my beliefs staying true to how I perceive the world, but at the same time being really able to hear things from other perspectives, even if I fully disagree with them. And at the end of the day, be committed to the most sacred thing, which is that human beings are sacred and life is sacred. And even if people don't carry the same belief system, they still deserve the same level of reverence and honor as a living being that deserves dignity as a human being. So having that as a preface, I feel it's going to be important for almost every conversation we're going to have, especially the one we're going to have on Friday, because I posted about Pluto a month ago. And finally, Pluto is entering into Capricorn on Monday. And the whole world is freaking out about Capricorn moving into Aquarius. And so people are like, what are you talking about, Z? None of the astrological <laughs> systems that I studied does, Cap does Pluto move into Capricorn in none of the systems except the reality of the cosmological sky. If you look up at the sky through a telescope, um, you will see Pluto enter into Capricorn on Monday. And I'm going to enter into these murky waters of discussing fringe and taboo subjects. Um, so on Friday, you have that to look forward to. But today, we're going to talk about money. Money and astrology and dragons and sexuality. These are all the things that human beings tend to get our panties up in a knot when we start talking about them. And for me, I really just want to approach things from this perspective that I just want to see heaven on earth. I want to see all of our dreams come true. I've had visions since I was a little girl of all of these hundreds of healing centers being built all over the world, of free energy, technology, futuristic devices and inventions, and a galactic consciousness civilization in which the whole planet, every human being on the planet is in remembrance of this peace and love that is in the core of our being. And this is a dream that I hold in my body as an energy. And that's why I like to share my sound healing because it really shares the true fabric and the frequency of my soul. And I hope that everyone can just feel that this is where I'm coming from with this discussion because some of the things that I tell you about money today may be 
ways of perceiving money that you've never heard about before. But I invite you to allow your body to truly feel um, as opposed to allowing your mind to become confronted because this, these beliefs and perspectives have never been experienced yet before. So part of the inspiration that um, uh, led to today's call was actually from week one of my new course, Womb Wealth Creation. And it was amazing. Though I think there are now 500 women that are a part of this temple space, which is such a powerful energy. We're just creating this prayer together. I asked everyone to create an altar to not only pray for their own life, but to see each other rise and to pray for the highest outcome for all of us, you know? And in that first day, we went to meet the money goddess. So I'm going to talk about this money goddess because she is someone that I have been mentoring with. You might be thinking, Z, you're crazy because money is blood-soaked black magic from the Babylonian times. And I just hope that you stick around because I don't disagree with you. And I'm not naive to all of those energies. And I'm perfectly aware of the fact that I am an angelic co-creator who has the capacity and the spiritual awareness and the spiritual power to purify and break even the darkest of spells on earth, to purify and cleanse and liberate even the most inverted and truly degraded consciousness, demons, energy on the earth. And at this point, you know, I have people sending me crazy evil magic. And as soon as it hits my field, it's like karma that's associated with those lineages become cleansed because that's what I have committed myself to. That's what I've committed my life to. And so there's just so many ways that we can basically psychically ninja and activate our quantum consciousness to embody our highest creator power in union with mother, father, God. And that's what this work is about. And so um, many years ago, when I first started on my mission, I was shown these massive healing centers all over the world that I think so many of you have seen as well. This is because we're a team. We're really a unit. The Aurora and the Star Seeds, we are really one body, right, of living Mother, Father, God, living dream of the earth. We're this one force that was born out of the imagination for heaven on earth by God and by the earth. And so that's why we are unified in our dreams and our visions and our desires. And, you know, the earth would want us to feel like we're competing against each other where there's one person that needs to be really important. But the truth is, is that those are all viruses and um, really low, low level viruses as far as I'm concerned, when you tap into your true avatar or soul self, you know, it's like kindergarten distortions because inside of our heart, we remember this place where we are most concerned with being of service to unity and to God and to our mission. And that's what we're all here to do together. And as I stepped onto that path to commit myself to making this dream come true, I realized that it was going to require a lot of money. And I hated money. I thought that money was the root of all evil. I saw money create so much stress and um, hardship for my parents and my family. I saw money make people do horrible things, you know, when my grandparents died and it turned family members against each other. And so in my mind, I thought money was the devil. And for many years, I avoided money like the plague. I lived in my car. I was homeless. I did grid work. I went as far out cosmically as I possibly could. And yet every single year, I found myself back in my mom's basement. And I just couldn't figure it out. And I was like, God, I'm on a mission here. Aren't you supposed to be helping me? And God was like, you are on earth. And <laughs> you're on earth for a reason. You got to figure this out. And so that was when I decided that if it was to be, it was up to me and I got a job. And actually all through high school, I had a almost full-time job as a piano teacher. 
It was only when I had my spiritual awakening when I decided to renounce the false matrix forever. <laughs> and I'm sure that's not a singular experience that I'm, ha I'm having. I think many star seeds and many light workers have a really hard time reconciling with this energy of money and basically decide to live in poverty out of rebellion somehow and convince themselves that it is a power move when it, it absolutely isn't. And so I realized that and I got myself a job as a chef. And at that time, I was praying to understand my mission. And this green goddess appeared one day after I was done my prayer. Um, and she was knocking my window and I opened the window and she comes in and I'm like, who are you? She's like, I'm the money goddess. I was like, okay. And she's like, I'm being trafficked. I'm just an emanation of creativity itself. I am just the embodiment and the idea of energy flow. I am an embodiment of what can happen when people share and collaborate. I am an embodiment of the economy of life of nature. And I began to really, it's almost like this green Tara energy where when you tune into Mother Earth, like these are things that we really take for granted, right? The perfection of the ecosystem and the intelligence that is interwoven in the mycelium and the cycles of life and death and how nutrients are perpetually supporting the ecosystem. Um, it's really truly a work of art. It's an intelligence that we become so severed from that we really... Um, take it for granted because we think, oh, you know, it's so nice to go for a walk in nature and I can get grounded and I love connecting with nature, but rarely do we really consider the level of just creative intelligence and natural abundance and the blueprints of creation that are embedded in the bodies and the systems of the plants and the animals and the elements. It's truly immaculate and incredible. And what's even more amazing is that every single living being inside of this meticulous ecosystem has a purpose, has a value, and it gives something in this world and it receives something from this world. And this keeps the web of life intact. And she was sharing with me how money originally before the fall of consciousness, prior to any invasions and imprisonments and soul prison matrixes, <laughs> money has been part of human civilization and something that has been highly revered as that element of sharing and collaboration as a reflection of that nature's intelligence and in human civilization for a really long time. And this, you know, really made my heart melt in the recognition that, you know, every single system on earth has been hijacked and it's so easy for us to just, I hate this term to throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> But it's like, oh, we see the healthcare system. It is bad. So do we just throw it out and say, okay, as a civilization, we're just not going to have healthcare systems anymore? Of course not. We remember that there is an original template of the truest form of healthcare, which has to do with the immaculate understanding of our multidimensionality and the multidimensional nature of our body and our organs and our spirit and how our soul enters into our bodies and brings it to life and has this experience of life inside of our body. And so understanding how there's these distorted overlays that are placed on top of things helps us connect to the original blueprint and the organic frequency of money before it was ever degraded into a control system. And what was also very interesting was that there's this correlation with the ley line system as well. Because originally the ley line system was made to connect all of life on earth and to act as a communication system. When one set of codes and intelligences are set forth into the ley lines, it automatically proliferates and, and reaches every single living being on earth. And we'll see planetary evolutionary phases initiated through these impulses of codes. And so of course, the old ley line system was then hijacked and all of these different wars and trauma, death and ritual and institutions were placed on top of the ley line system to now turn it into a control system. So was the ley line system always a control system? No, it was hijacked and turned into one. So this is what she shared with me and it was what has happened 
to money because there's a lot of misconception. Many people believe that in the new earth, we just won't have money. But people that say that truly don't actually have an understanding of what money is. They're looking at it from the frame of the third dimension where this current state of money and the current beings that control this current monetary system are, in fact, evil. But the thing is, this idea of energy exchange, it is a staple and it is a structure that exists in nature, as we can see in the flow of carbon dioxide and oxygen from the trees and the plants into the air and the animals that are infinitely reciprocating in these exchanges that perpetuate life on Earth. Similarly, when we build advanced civilizations, Money is only an organizing principle. So what is interesting about the organizing principles is that normally in a organic system, the highest organizing principle is, of course, God. Mother, Father, God, the original intelligence of living eternal light, eternal life, eternal intelligence. This is meant to be the organizing force of intelligence on the earth. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Blue screen of life. Um, yeah, I, I it's been raining here all day. And so I hope that I'm back. I'm just going to wait and see if I'm back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, yes, my I've lost. Um, I lost my power for a second. I think I've lost myself on Instagram. So Oh, I'm back. Okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, sorry, everybody. So anyway, as I was saying about the organizing principle on Earth, the organizing principle is meant to be God. That means that we're all meant to be interconnected to this original intelligence that is orchestrating our life. And when this intelligence is able to flow 
through this world unimpeded, meaning there's nobody trying to hide this force, nobody that's trying to distort it, nobody that's trying to destroy the systems that allow this intelligence to flow, and nobody's just trying to block this awareness that we're all connected to God, essentially, then we will see a world that is perfectly harmonized by synchronicity, where every heart is organized and given life to by this intelligence, which awakens the original template of our heart. This is the emerald crystal heart that many talk about, where it's really imbued with these qualities of an ascended human, the original template of the human being. This person is kind, it's benevolent, it's caring, it's loving. It really sounds like the angelic family that is bringing this original template of being human back to the earth. So when God is the organizing principle and it is free to envelop and proliferate and flow through the world to be the highest power in the world, then that's what we would see is that every human being is templated and connected to this consciousness. So unfortunately, of course, there's been this fall and beings that are intentionally severing human beings from this higher consciousness, intentionally distorting what God is, creating this false fallen masculine version of the God and eradicating the feminine principle of God. These are all very intentional efforts to block the true original intelligence of God from being the highest power in the world. And so when we see that that power has severed it itself from humanity, then that power is not able to fully orchestrate currency in this world. And so we see that fallen human beings have now become the orchestrators of money, of this organizing principle of energy and resources on earth. And so from there, we postulate that it's money's fault, that it's money's fault that we are in the system where money is being used to fund wars and things that are very unfair and create systems that are anti-life and don't support human life at all. And this is where we're mistaken. Right? We are mistaking the object, the money itself, with the organizing principle that has been cut off. We see that the fallen intelligences of selfishness has degraded the system and forced itself to become the organizing principle of resources. And so what is happening is, okay, do we then just abandon the earth? Do we abandon the ley line system? Do we abandon resources and money altogether? Of course not. As God is coming back in to once again become the highest power and the highest organizing principle once more here on earth, what we're seeing is human beings aligning to that original template, to that original consciousness, and allowing ourselves to become a conduit so that God can become the organizing principle behind creation here on this earth again. So correcting and healing and working with the energy body of the earth with the ley lines and purifying and healing money, they really go hand in hand. So one thing that came through during class was that every time money changes hands, it is encoded with an energy. Just one second. Can you get it? Okay, I just have to close the door in one second. I can tell you that... Um, <laughs> People are, there are energies that do not want light workers to be the organizing principle of money because this is like more interference than usual. <laughs> the gardener just decided to start watering the plants right in front of my door for some reason. And he's never done that before. I guess he's watering the money intelligence. So, um, Oh. So I'm just seeing. Okay, I'm back. All right. <laughs> okay. 
ask. So would we just abandon the ley line system even when we find out that the ley lines have been turned into a mind control system? Well, we just abandon music when we discover that music has been turned into a mind control system. Of course not. People are making new kinds of music and are doing griddle work all the time because we are purifying and cleansing and restoring the original architecture as it was meant to be used. And so similarly with money, every time money exchanges hands, it becomes encoded with an energy. And that is why people are really repulsed by money, especially if you're energetically sensitive, because you can feel all of it. When money is being spent at the grocery store and people are in poverty and they're afraid to use their dollars, when money is being laundered to buy weapons, when money is being used to traffic you know, human beings and exchange drugs, all of those energies of non-benevolence and non-reverence and you know non-love essentially are being encoded into the money not to mention that the current bills you know is this fallen egyptian magic that is being propagated specifically to survey and control people's energy so of course as a light worker you're going to feel all of that and just feel repulsed by money and what i then realize is that actually we have the ability to now use money as a object of purification. So when money flows into your life, it now has the opportunity to become purified. And when you spend that money, you now have an opportunity to free that money from the old system, to free that energy from the old system and to apply it in a way that will liberate the quanta, the quanta that is held, the consciousness units, the, the energy, the quantum energy that is held in the money. So one thing that you, one way that you can start doing this is becoming more mindful, right? People say that they hate money, but they really use it every day when you're gassing up your car, when you're going to buy groceries, when you're paying your bills. And the greatest way we imprison ourselves is by allowing our misperceptions of money to color our attitude when it comes to our life. So people say, oh, you know, I have to pay this bill and I have to go and buy these things. When we change the narrative and the attitude, it's like, wow, I'm so happy and grateful that I get to pay this bill because it's helping me access the internet and learn all these things and talk to my friends. And I'm so happy that I get to use my phone and you know, have access to my community. And I'm so happy and grateful that I'm living in this house and it's a safe place for me and my family to be. And this slight shift in our attitude helps us heal our relationship with money so that money stops being our imprisonment. Money stops being the thing that belittles and limits us and instead becomes a friend. And what's amazing is that you can actually meet this being, um, this emanation, embodiment of Green Tara. She's very, she's like Green Tara. She's not exactly like Green Tara, but Green Tara is just another emanation of this emerald life-giving goddess consciousness that holds the intelligences of life. So when you go and meet this being, she will transmit to you the original template and blueprints of co-creation and collaboration and sharing and exchange that helps us clear our relationship. So um, here's the next interesting part is that after class, whew, um, we we're clearing these limiting beliefs around money out of our body. And people were having, I just have to say that so many women met this money goddess and we're just crying and we're so taken aback by her grace and her wisdom because people think that money is just this one-dimensional third you know flat um dumb <laughs> thing but really when you think about it, it it has to do with human creative energy which is one of the most sacred things on earth and it helps us come into a right relationship and to actually honor and be grateful for what we have. And money has so much to actually teach us. But all of these misconceptions, they block us from being able to truly learn. And then that leads to us participating in the anti-life system. 
when we can't even honor each other, when you buy something and you feel like you're losing money and, and this lack energy makes us, you know, not fully honor and value each other as human beings. Like when I pay my employees and when I, you know, purchase things on the internet, like when I truly value something, my heart wants to just like be there with how sacred it is that someone is creating beauty, creating art, creating something that is going to benefit my life. And because of the pervasiveness of the lack consciousness, it is stripped human dignity out of co-creation. And this is something that upon further inspection is really, really sad because we lose touch with the soul of being a human. What is the most precious and unique thing about each human is their own unique gifts and unique value and unique expression, unique artistry. And in order for us to carry value and to appreciate each other, it's like, yes, we can barter, but the barter system is hard to use at scale. And that's why humans create money. In order for us to organize large amounts of resources and large numbers of people and create worldwide systems that help everyone and create systems that support the entirety of human civilization on earth, it's going to be hard to barter. <laughs> and so we need to have a system that we can use that is in inscribed with the blueprints of actual honor and reverence for human life. And that is something that needs to be healed and repaired regardless of what monetary system we have. People say, well, you know, one day we're going to rid of money and we're going to have something else. Well, that something else can only come from human beings that have healed this relationship with creation itself to come back into right relationship with the earth and with our bodies and with our time and our energy and with that of each other. And so once we do that, it doesn't really ma matter what system of money we have. We know that it will be built on the right heart-centered principles of love and co-creativity and mutual respect. And I think that's really the consciousness shift that is happening in money, regardless of what system it is at this time. So after this, these teachings from the money goddess, which was so precious, right, we're bringing we're taking ourselves back into the earth consciousness, into the organic, and we are literally transmuting and healing the systems on earth and uplifting and resolving the curses and spells and the evil magic that are held in these systems through the power of our own heart, through the power of our own consciousness. That is why it is so powerful for lightworkers to also be entrepreneurs, to also share your gifts um, and start a business. Because not only are you sharing your gifts, you are actually purifying these collective energies and resolving these planetary curses and spells inside the money as you do it. And anyone that feels resistant to this, you know, you really have to ask yourself if you fully trust your own heart, if you fully know your own heart and how in integrity with yourself and with your creativity, you are willing to show yourself that you are right? Because a system is just a system and anyone can misuse a system from greed, but anyone can also, you know, stand on the pillars of right relationship. And it's very powerful when light workers do that because you begin to correct this reality and purify this reality from the foundations. So that was really incredible. People were also being gifted cash <laughs> during the breaks. And everything and it was just so powerful to be there with like 350 women in the same place praying for ourselves and each other praying for the world imagining the kind of world we can live in if we all had our vision and our destiny fulfilled and that money was just not the limitation anymore and after that um i think my husband wanted to watch this movie and it was called bit con it was a funny concept right because for me Anytime I watch anything, I've just trained my consciousness to be inspired by things that jump out at me. I've trained my consciousness to not only focus on the things that I disagree with because it's a bad habit and is a waste of energy, 
like, you know, you've ever noticed that we can get into a space where like, no matter what we're looking at, we think, oh, that's distorted. Oh, that person's whatever. Oh, you know, that person's sharing misinformation. Oh, this movie's like full of evil magic. And we can get into this place where we're so pessimistic and it's like boring. I think that that's so boring. That's a boring way to live because that will only be a reality if you're not just so inspired by what you're doing. Like, I say that bench warmers yell the loudest because all of my haters that I've ever had are people that don't really do anything, which is why it doesn't really hurt my feelings <laughs> when they criticize me because people that are working on themselves and building a legacy, they know how much work goes into that. And I respect people that just try. You know what I mean? And so I've really trained my consciousness to not be just picking out what I don't agree and just get my panties all up in a knot about it. I have trained my consciousness to gain value from the world. And this is another abundance code, okay? I'm just dropping bombs for free, you guys. These are the things that, you know, can really change your life because when you know how to gain value and to perceive abundance, no matter where you are and who you're with, um, this is a gift because all of a sudden you will feel inspired and you will feel abundant. You will feel a limitless amounts of, of energy and inspiration no matter where you are. But if you're in a poverty mindset, you will see lack and degradation and disagreements and conflict no matter where you are. And you will continually feel like there is an infinite amounts of lack because your consciousness is stuck in that state of limitation and lack because that's what you're choosing to see that's what your brain has been programmed to see in the world and so i was happy to just be there and watch this movie bitcon is about this con artist these young men from miami that started this scam um this cryptocurrency scam website and basically <laughs> the funny thing was that throughout the movie it was just this they had several scenes of this printer just printing money and the one thing that jumped out at me was this quote. They kept repeating unlimited money hack, unlimited money glitch. And this term just jumped out at me and just, just cinched its way into my brain. I was so excited that my reality had brought me this sentence because in the human design, there's something called the game player channel is 28 to, I don't remember what the other one, maybe 38. I think it's the root to the sacral chakra, but 28 is the game player uh, gate. And I have that whole channel. So that's the game player channel. And so having this gate active just means that you're born with an inclination. But if you don't have the gate active, you can activate it through your consciousness. So as I'm communicating this with you, you can activate this consciousness inside of yourself. And this is really essential because Game player consciousness essentially lets us know that this life is a game and you're inside of an avatar suit and there is rules to the game, right? And inside of any game, there are rules and inside of any game, there is a goal. And I believe that the source players, this is like a game board that is very difficult. I understand that our desire or our goal for this game is to literally bring God's love back into the heart of every human being. Of course, there are um, villains in this game, and there are things that have been set against us to make a game harder. Like, for example, if there was no church and there was no, you know, witch hunts, it would just make the game kind of boring because, you know, you would just communicate to a bunch of humans that God exists and then we just all go, all go home. It's kind of like not as fun as the game could be. But turns out that the villains have got here and they've programmed the human beings with all sorts of crazy belief systems. And now our objective for the game for us to win is a little bit hard because not only do we have to embody this love and show humanity the way, we also have to get through their programming and their mind control and the viruses and the, you know, the junk food and all of that stuff. So that just makes, see, it's a, it's a mind mindset shift because at first we're like, you know, oh, this mission is so hard and the world is so you know, bleak and I kind of want to just go home. Now we're in the game. We're like, this is supposed to be hard because we're playing this game. Now, when you are playing a game, when you're playing a game, 
if you play video games like I never did, but Shane told me that there are these cheat codes that you can enter into the game and the cheat codes would give you a special access. So for example, maybe it's unlimited XP, unlimited health points, right? No matter how many times the, the enemy hits you, you just still have full life bars. Maybe the glitch is the secret rooms that you can get to that nobody talks about. And so this specific cheat code is the unlimited money glitch or the game, like no matter how many times you spend your coins, there's just an infinite number of coins and you never have to worry about not having enough coins. And that is the activation. That is the glitch that we can activate into our game playing. If, I mean, there are, you know, um, it's like, advanced advanced player tricks right you can only activate these codes once you get to a certain level of your avatar and i think that everything every single star seed this is the interesting thing and what the guardians and what the money goddess have shared with me is that at this time the grids are shifting and so the prerequisites to accessing infinite resources is your ability to self-heal and self-correct and really embody the original blueprints of consciousness. Really commit to the values and the virtues that we all agree upon, but in your day-to-day -day life. So for example, we all agree that unity consciousness is a really important thing. We all agree that all is one and we all love each other, but in our real life, we're constantly judging people and what they're doing, feeling like they're not doing it right, feeling like people are, you know, misinfo agents or I think that, oh, that person's too successful or that person is, what are they doing with their face? You know, why are they getting psychic? <laughs> why are they getting plastic surgery? We have so many judgments on people, but then intellectually, we all agree that unity consciousness is really important. And so there's a, a break there and what we think and what we know is right and our embodiment. And that is because separation is a virus that has hacked itself into our body and made itself almost our body's natural state. I can feel this in the frequencies that are emitted off of social media, which is why so many stupid disagreements happen on Facebook specifically. Have you ever noticed that you go on Facebook and all of a sudden you just want to fight people um, or just disagree? Like every post you see, you just want to disagree with it. It's like this frequency weapon that wants people to be pitted against each other so that we would continue to express what Lisa Renee calls bi-wave consciousness, which is essentially separation consciousness, consciousness that desires to sever and make the self important, the self special, like super superiority in any way, whether that is racial or gender or spiritual right? That just wants to separate ourselves from other people in some way. And the truth is, is that this organic intelligence, this original orchestrating force, God, um, that is returned to the earth, that is the orchestrator of heaven. Like when we say we want to create heaven on earth, it is really this consciousness, this frequency of eternal peace and harmony. And those who are ready to really do the work to come into this consciousness and really be more committed to that than anything, more committed to unity than being right, more com committed to unity than feeling special, more committed to unity than judging others, right? It's like in every moment of our daily life, we're more committed to just the work, which is if we're going to bring heaven on earth, we're going to have to embody the consciousness first. We're not going to get anywhere if we don't. So our devotion to that inner work, to this ability to bypass the programming in our brain, to truly embody higher consciousness is our ticket to actually activating the unlimited money glitch because the unlimited money glitch, it's God. It's the infinite power to co-create. It's this infinite power to orchestrate. There is nothing out of the realms of possibility for miracles ha to happen for you for systems to build, for you to share your gifts in a way that just brings, you know, brings you success in ways that you can't even imagine. But in order for us to quote unquote capitalize on synchronicity, on magic, on creation magic, we have to become the right frequency match for God to work through us. And this is where the investment 
everything that we invest in is about healing our body and healing our, our soul and our heart so that we're really a trustworthy steward of unlimited money. It's not about this entitlement, like every human being should have this glitch just because they exist, because we've already seen lots of people who do not know how to be responsible with resources that belong to the all. But there needs to be this organizing principle that supports the establishment of these healing centers, of these, you know, to heal the earth, to purify the water, to rescue the children. These are things that need to be put in place by human beings. Human beings need to make this happen. And you're the human beings to do it. You are the human beings that need to make this happen. And so in order for you to activate the unlimited money glitch, you have to first purify your own body to come back into a place where you are truly devoted to the original intelligence, truly devoted to unity consciousness, to unconditional love, to repairing your consciousness so that you're restored back into a state of innocence that only seeks to embody benevolence. And this is something that is so profound because last week in our um, container, we began talking about power and pleasure. These are two more energies that have been so hijacked in, in our world but we talked about like why are so many light workers disempowered or feel unworthy of standing in their power and is a really simple answer true power comes from your right relationship with nature and your right relationship with god and your right relationship with yourself when you're right with yourself when you know you're in integrity when you love god and move with god there's nothing for you to be worried about or be shy about you can just be who you are you don't have a desire to overpower people but you just are exhibiting the groundedness and the capacity to express that power from your body and i think that a lot of times in our spiritual community we want to bypass that and just say girl you know you're powerful you can be all powerful and i think that's you know healthy to a certain extent but at the end of the day um Imposter syndrome really gets cleared when we are in right relationship with ourselves. Like when you can fully see yourself as you are, when you can see that you've put in the work and you appreciate your heart and you know that your heart is in the right place, that is where you source your power from, not some imaginary entitlement that just because you exist, you should feel powerful. It's just part of our human development. Like as a child, we're supposed to teach children these original templates of morality of the heart and that's the place where power comes from when we know that we are rooted in love and we're rooted in our destiny and we're rooted in our purpose that's when this power can flow unimpeded through our body and then to realize that pleasure is just our body's relationship to reality itself right and this hijack happens because we're being severed from the organic reality. All of these distortions and these mind control overlays around money and our power and God and our sexuality, it is all to sever our own consciousness from the forces of nature where, again, we're, we actually source our power. And so in the process of activating our unlimited money glitch, it's like, are we willing to really go in and liberate ourselves from every layer and level of the distortion matrix because that's what is required and how we prove to ourselves that we're in it for the right reasons right like we can't say oh i'm here to heal the planet but not be willing to heal ourselves 100% not be willing to look at the things that are uncomfortable inside of our body like you know when i was a little girl I was also exposed to all sorts of violence and pornography and sexual abuse. And so as I grew up, this becomes such an uncomfortable part. And for a long time, you know, what we do is disassociate. We say, oh, we just stay in the heart and we'll just stay, la, 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 we'll speak light language and, you know, have no money. And then it's like, eventually I'm like, shit, I have to take responsibility for my lower chakras. I have to get into my body to make an impact in this world. And so how can I really 
take responsibility for that, even though it's so uncomfortable to look at these parts of myself that have been so traumatized and degraded by this matrix. Um, and I think that's kind of the depth of work that I'm stepping into facilitating is this recognition that there is this original blueprint of human, the divine human avatar blueprint template. Um, it is a person that is holding this original intelligence of innocence and unconditional love and eternal peace and harmony and curiosity. That is really the intelligence of mother, father, God that is imbued within all of us. And it is up to us to actually locate that consciousness inside of our body and stay committed and devoted to that and only that. And what I teach people to do is how to actually succeed in the earth plane by doing that. So many people think that in order to succeed in business, we have to just abandon our soul and do what's viral and do these marketing ploys. And every time I try any of those things, it does not work for me. Like if I try to do any reel that is not organic to my being, it just flops. If I try to do any marketing that's not just an expression of myself, it flops. And so I understand that there's a whole new way of business. There's a whole new architecture. There's a whole new pathway of energy that is there for us, specifically that the earth is supporting, where the architecture is now the more true light true love that you're bringing to the world, the more that you are just being fully yourself and you're devoted to yourself, the more you will be rewarded for that. That's the new architecture. The old architecture says the more you give yourself up and sell your soul, the more you fuck other people over, the more you'll be rewarded for that. But now that reality is crumbling and I feel it in my own life where we're here to build this new world through building it, through living it, through being present, through being in our bodies, through being a human. That's why we came down here to be a human. And um, that's really what this uh, container is for. And I just can't believe how many miracles women are having already. And so I just want to let you know that it is still open. You can still join. We've just passed week two. We're heading into week three this weekend. Everything is recorded and you can access it. Still, you can see the links in the description is wombhealth.org slash wealth. I teach you how to build your service-based, mission-based business to create value and change lives. And through that, build a business of abundance so that you can actually buy the land that you want to build your temples on. You want to build your healing center. You want to rescue children. I gave up waiting. I, I was never... <laughs> I was never a waiter. I don't really like waiting, you know, for other people. And I've had million dollar investors, two of them. I've had to turn down two million dollar investors in my life because it's just complicated when you're not in sovereign, um, sovereign, let's say for the lack of a better word, control over these temple spaces because it's not like you're starting a startup and your investors are going to get a return, right? Very few people on this planet, once they've made that money, are like in a place where they're ready to just give you a million dollars for no reason, like for no return. Like if they were that kind of person, they would already be doing that project. They would al already be putting their money in those spaces. And so, I mean, for me, every single dollar of this course is going into this sacred land that I'm being asked to steward because I'm just, this is how I'm coded. But, and I think this is how every one of you are going to be coded. Like this is who God wants to give money to, right? But this is why we're not waiting for those people because it's just, it doesn't make sense. Like those people, maybe one day, you know, they will awaken and they'll want to purify their money and they'll need us to help them do that. But in order for you to be in a place where those people will want you to do that for them, you have to think about what kind of person you have to be. How advanced, how embodied, how mature, how grounded of a person do you have to be to facilitate that level of responsibility for the world? And so that's kind of how I built my business is I just really focused on how can I become the person that money can trust? How can I become a person that God can trust with this mission? 
How can I become a person that the land will trust, that I can be a good steward, that I can listen, that I can give everything that I got, right? And once you come into that frequency of purity and embodiment and maturity inside of your body, where you are here to be of service and to create heaven on earth, and you know that, you wake up in the morning and you just commit to that every second of your day, then your body is going to be ready to activate this unlimited money glitch that is literally ready to bring you everything you need to fulfill your mission. But it begins with setting yourself aligned and, you know, right in right relationship with creation and with your, with your body and with the earth and with mother, father, God. So anyway, um, somebody said anything for men. So I do have teachings for men in the earth star Academy is the same process. I don't hold medicine containers for men at this time because a lot of these teachings are biological. And so I teach a lot about the bio spiritual anatomy of the womb organs of our sexual organs and how the female body is made to co-create with the universe and men's bodies are designed to co-create with the universe too, but just differently because you have different organs. And as a Taoist healer, you know, the Taoists are come from these lines of creating ancient traditional Chinese medicine. The organs are very spiritual. The biospiritual anatomy of the human body is very multidimensional. And so for me, I really thrive in spaces where I'm holding medicine containers extensively for women. But these teachings that I'm sharing with you, they exist um, in the Earth Star Academy and they're available for men and women. So that's earthstar.academy. Okay. So that I think is the transmission I have for you today where the unlimited money glitch is basically you stepping into your highest avatar embodiment because that's when you are in such union with God that you know miracles are ready to literally manifest in front of you because of the relationship that you have internally woven with God. God is no longer this thing out there that you pray to, but you have formed this internal union with this fabric of creation and you've come into your own body's highest intelligence. You've pulled your highest soul's intelligence into your body. You do this through, you know, fully and completely committing to your mission. And this is what I mean by having your mission fully turn you on because a lot of people are not ready to fully believe in themselves. They say, oh, I think I have a mission, but I don't really know what it is. Do you not know what it is or are you just not fully committing to it? Are you afraid of what it would mean and what you would lose and what would change if you were to fully allow yourself to remember who you are? And this is where we have to get really, really honest with ourselves, because the only person that's going to be able to make your destiny happen, it's you. And you have to make that decision every single day. It's not like Z just wakes up and all this cool stuff just happens. Z wakes up every single day and recommits to her mission and to God and say, this is what I'm here for. And when I make that commitment, the next steps of the journey unfold, right? And so in order for us to receive all of the resources that we need, all we have to do is come into right relationship. And that is the place where we will feel worthiness or we'll feel confidence or feel assured and in, in our knowing of who we are and what we're here to do. And from that place, you know, we activate this whole other quantum awareness where we are playing this game and our source is literally the highest power of creation. And the highest power of creation is flowing through our body. And this is where healing the God wounds is obviously the most, such an essential, an essential piece to all, all of it. So I'm going to scroll through here and see if there are any questions here. Where can I obtain a medicine container for men? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, you guys, this work is so quantum. It is so intelligent. I honestly, you know, people that join in containers say that they've never experienced anything like it. They say that they just have no idea. Um, 
that this experience is even possible. I, I really don't even have the ability to convey and explain to you. Um, what it is. Um, so anyway, if you are just watching this, um, I invite you to come in to the container. We're con heading into week three. Next week will be um, our third week. And um, as far as releasing programs, What, like stop pulling back and release all the albums. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not understanding that question. So Emily says, if we are wholeheartedly clueless on what our mission is, do we just keep at our healing? Yes. If you're clueless about your heal about your mission, then healing is your mission. Right? Becoming because if you don't know what your mission is, it means that the core of your consciousness is not inside of yourself. And so then the most important thing is for you to meditate and come into your body, heal the reasons why you're disassociated from the body, heal the reasons why you're choosing not to be in the body. And once you get back into the core of yourself, you know, they make it seem like inner knowing it's some crazy. And so if you don't know what your mission is, you know, create more space. I say that the way that you find out what your mission is, is to find the things that you love the most, find the things that piss you off the most. Like if you, and then, you know, really commit to something, right? Choose something that you love and commit to it. And this becomes like this awakening of the heart, because how can you look around in the world and not feel hurt? or angered or unjust about any of it. There's so many different things that you can commit your life to making better. And so then it's just about allowing your heart to actually feel the devastation. And that's where the healing comes in. Because once you heal, you come into yourself, you'll see the things that give you life and, and make you feel something inside. And then you just have to actually commit to yourself. You just have to commit to it. Hill says, are you going to have a retreat in Ireland? Yes, I am. We're just hammering down the information now, but we're doing a conference in Ireland in August. So over the 888 portal, um, we're doing a little convergence. So that's going to be really awesome. So anyway, on that note, I love you guys so much. I hope that this was a helpful and activating discussion. I hope that you can feel a little bit more ease and spaciousness and innocence um, and playfulness in your relationship with money. Um, Laura says, hi, do you teach energy healing? I teach um, an advanced form of healing. It's not just energy healing. It is light body restoration it is a three-year program um it is called the earth star academy so you can go for at earthstar.academy um it's a monthly subscription you can have access to lots of self-paced curriculum i do live calls every month and there's like a hundred different healings you can use so um yeah, you can go ahead and check that out. Is earthstar.academy. Okay, so I am so excited to share this download with you guys because it's truly life-changing. When I realized that in order for us to activate the unlimited money glitch, we just have to be ourselves and remember our original blueprint. And the world wants us to think that we have to know how to run ads and speak in marketing lingo and understand sales but really, the most valuable energy we can be is the pure frequency of love. And you might think that, you know, light workers have been broke forever. This is not something that can create money. But the fabric of reality is changing. The matrix is literally changing. And at this point, those people that are running reversals, their worlds and their businesses are about to crumble, where everyone 
that is actually operating in alignment, you will find that the earth and the spirit and God is more and more going to be able to support you in your success. And so we can just focus on that alignment, on that embodiment. Um, and on that note that you can also journey and meet this green Tara money goddess so that she can show you, you know, the, the journey is really profound. Um, you know, if you join my course, I facilitate this journey for you. It's like an hour and a half long quantum journey to meet this goddess, but you can also do it yourself for free. Absolutely. Which is why I'm sharing this information with you. Because, you know, I don't really care if you join my class or not. You know, I really want the people that do feel so nourished by it. And it's just such a vibe because people, honestly, they're like, the course has already paid for itself in the first week because miracles are happening for them. But for you, if you just want to journey and meet this green goddess, she has so much to teach us. It's the consciousness of Mother Earth. And she has a dream for the advanced civilization that is meant to be here on the earth. And sometimes our Lemurian trauma makes us think that we're just going to go back to living in the ferns and in the caves because Atlantis never works. You know, anytime we try to build civilization, we just harm ourselves. And, you know, that's just like um, a teenagehood phase of a planet. There are so many ascended civilizations on other planets, many of which you came from. You have remembrances of these bio-organic free energy plasma ships, right? And how we can go anywhere around the planet um, and have free energy. So that is a place where the feminine and the masculine and Lemuria and Atlantis are perfectly harmonized and coexisting and in our fullest intelligence and genius in absolute harmony. And that's the kind of reality that we are moving into when we think heaven on earth, you know, we're not going back in time, back into Lemuria. It's not going to be a mother dominant world and it's not going to be a father dominant world. It's not going to be a divine feminine led matriarchy and it's not going to be a divine father led patriarchy, right? It's going to be this reality of perfect union where the feminine and the masculine can both exist in their highest creative expression in harmony. And we're going to see innovation, inventions, technology, but you know, really held in this in intelligence of union and harmony and unconditional love. And when you realize that, then it's just this really exciting future that we have to co-create together. And when we allow this intelligence of Mother Earth and Green Tara and the money goddess to share with us how sharing and co-creation and collaboration can happen on a planetary massive scale, this is when I get the tickles in my heart because it is such an exciting possibility when all humans can co-create and coexist and finally agree on some things right? We might not agree on everything, but there are things that we are going to have to agree on. Like life is sacred <laughs> and the earth is sacred and all human beings are equal in the eyes of God. You know, all these things, human beings, as human consciousness evolve, we are going to agree upon on a planetary level. And that will happen through your embodiment of that intelligence and your leadership to guide and create from that consciousness. And that's where it's exciting. And this is why I really stopped, you know, <laughs> one thing that happens a lot is that in class, people will constantly try to get me to talk shit about other people. They're like, Z, what do you think about these people? What do you think about those people? What do you think? Do you think these people are distorted? And I will never fall for this because I have promised myself to live in a consciousness of harmony and non-duality and non-violence an unconditional love. And so what that means is that we start to realize that everybody is exactly where they are and exactly where they're meant to be. And if you don't agree with what people do, then just don't look at it unless it's actually harmful. Like unless somebody's actually physically creating harm in the world, in which case there is a rightful honor and a morality there, you have to do something about it. But if you're not going to do anything and you're just there to like gossip and judge people, 
you know, there's just better ways to spend our time and our consciousness. Um, at this point, I can pretty much learn and receive value from anyone. And if I disagree with someone, I'm going to see the sacred life inside of their heart and move on with my life. I'm going to bow to the sacredness that there is their inherent human birthright right? Because, you know, the AI, it's what trains us to disrespect each other and take away each other's human dignity just because we think that they're not doing things in a way that we would do it, right? Isn't that wild how easy it is we just throw a person's entire spiritual worth in the garbage and we're willing to just say, oh, that person's just a misinfo agent. They could just go die or whatever. It's just an infiltration of the AI. They're trying to make us dehumanize each other. So you will not get me to talk shit about anyone that is just doing what their heart feels is right and giving to the world in the way that they do it. And so what can you do if you see someone doing something in a way that that's not the way that you would do it? Do it the way you would do it. <laughs> focus on your work. Focus on what you're doing right? Because when you are in your embodied gnosis and wisdom and you allow that light to shine, eventually those who are meant to be moved and to be touched and to be impacted by you, that's what's creating the ripples, right? Not just going out there and judging other people and things like that. So it's a bad habit that we've all been hacked. It's not anyone's fault. It's not like we were born judgmental. It's just that you know, these vibrations, the separation consciousness, the war consciousness, it really wants us to dehumanize each other. So I am committed to the sacredness of human life. I am committed to being in reverence and honoring each other. Right? And Justine says they're not necessarily working from their heart, but rather their ego or their head or injured heart. Yeah. So this is where we just have to be aware of ourselves. And how we can step into that space and how it takes so much energy. It takes so much of our time and our awareness. So anyway, that's my little um, TED talk on that subject because just a little preface on my talk on Friday about true sky astrology because Jesus Christ, there's no greater drama starter than talking about true star astrology and as a non i mean i've been following galactic astrology for i mean eight years i i guess eight um eight or nine years and this is just seeing the location of stars and galaxies and cosmic bodies and their effects on human consciousness and I began tracking this astrology because I noticed during certain alignments, there is a palpable energy shift that influences consciousness here on earth. And from there, I began to track these alignments. And then I found the work of Graham Forscutt, who is an galactic astrologer. And he runs his charts in a heliocentric format where the sun is in the center. And that's how he tracks his cosmic alignments. I found that so very cool because for me, I'm a tactile experiencer. So everything that I'm sharing with you is an experience that I've had that moved me somatically, that moved the organic intelligence inside of me. People can say things to my mind, but unless I have an experience that moves my soul, I, that's my compass. That's my North Star. Like Things have to really touch me and so that I know they're organic right? Because everything in this world is a mental false matrix projection field. And so in order for us to reconnect to the organic, we have to lean on the organic intelligence inside of our body. So that's the one form of astrology that really was the first one that truly resonated with me. I'm also very sensitive. So whenever I read like horoscopes and stuff, sometimes I see this like gray kind of overlay and it turns me off. It turns me away. So, um, so I've never really been into astrology for that reason, except galactic astrology. And then more recently, I discovered a true sky astrology, which is basically reading the sky. It's basically astronomy, reading the night sky as it really is. And when I discovered this astrology, it really made sense to me because I remembered 
that that's how astrology started, was that human beings would look up at the sky and be affected by the energies of the cosmos, and they would feel it. I mean, our ancestors had a much deeper biological relationship with the earth, right? That's how we created these celebrations. And we would feel, for example, the Pleiades gateway, when the earth, the sun, and the Pleiades star system are in a straight line, we always have our Pleiades gateway events then, you feel this activation, you feel the stellar consciousness awaken, you feel the stargates open. It's not a mental idea. And so our ancestors, you know, they were less distracted by phones and things like that. They were just with the earth. They would feel, they were so sensitive. They were, they would feel everything. And so that's how we used to relate to the stars. This is an organic relationship where we would have an actual internal personal relationship with nature. We have a personal relationship with the cosmos. The stars would dance and we would feel it and it would be a palpable soul resonance that we would experience. It's not a mental idea and a projection of our consciousness or intellectual understanding. So having had that understanding and remembrance of where astrology came from, it made me just really desire to connect with the stars personally. And so this is where I discovered true sky and discovered Pluto. And of course, everybody was like, Pluto's going into Aquarius. And it's so interesting. So on Friday, we're going to be discussing Pluto going into Capricorn, which by the way, Capricorn is a dragon, right? We're talking about a horned mermaid goat. <laughs> a horned mermaid goat? Like, tell me that's not a dragon, okay? Capricorns are dragons. And I realized that every um, every sign, every constellation, there's like a mental projection astrology field that has its definitions. And then there's an even other higher octave consciousness that is like the organic star intelligence of those constellations. And that is what we're going to be discussing. And it's no way going to be um, a talk about which one is the real one, which one's the not real one, because mental projections are real. The false matrix is a real reality because we've made it so. So tropical astrology will absolutely be true and affirmative and validating for a lot of people, but doesn't take away from the fact that it is a mental projection. It's created from our intellect and not based on the current locations of the cosmos interacting with our consciousness and our body. And so I am really excited to have this conversation. I'm also really excited for our community to be able to have this conversation without calling names because I, people have been sending me different talks about True Sky and literally there's like people go crazy. Like they start saying like literally just dissing people's physical appearance and stuff, which is like, you know, third grade behavior. And you can really tell the frequency band of consciousness that is holding on to certain beliefs. And again, as a scientist, this is all very fascinating phenomena for me to see because I'm not really invested in being right in any direction. I'm just here to share like what is most inspiring to me. And if people, if some people have like an actual problem with me having this joyful experience and personal relationship with life, that's its own thing that is very interesting that can be looked at. So anyway, um, I hope that you guys all come to our Pluto transmission on Friday. I think it's going to be at 3.30 Central Standard Time. Um, but anyway, I'm going to schedule it on YouTube and you're going to be able to see what time it's at. But um, anyway, that wraps up this live stream for today. I hope you enjoyed this little quantum exploration around money with, uh, with me and my brain. <laughs> um, it's always a joy to share my brain with you guys because it's honestly just really fun. And I love that it is inspiring and that it gives you a morale boost and it gives you inspiration for your journey. I just absolutely love that. So, um, if you want to join Womb Wealth Creation, there's the link in the description or in my link in bio. Um, and uh, on that note, I love you guys so much and I'll see you on Friday.
Bye.